pleasure to be back here. The, the title of this lecture was chosen already two months ago with antisemitism in France. Suddenly, since last Friday, November 13, 2015, antisemitism doesn't seem to be any more one of the main issues in contemporary France. There is no obvious relation between January 2014 and November 2015. The French population, as such, is now becoming the target of Islam's killer related to Daesh. The broader question, you know, Kulibali were willing to kill Charlie Hebdo stuff and any Jew they met. Last Friday in Paris, a peaceful young crowd gathering together in this fashion cafe during this beautiful autumn evening of listening to the metal music the back of face suddenly the killers acting to be from the in the teens. This time, any obvious relation, any obvious antisemitic dimensions seems to have vanished. Paris, a symbol of French nation, of its values and wars, of its peaceful democratic life, was brutally assailed instead of Charlie or the so-called kosher shop. Therefore, yesterday drama had apparently no connection with the planned topic of this lecture, and I almost cancelled it. Yet, if things radically change, one can nevertheless find some almost common features between those dreadful attacks. When last Sunday the Islamic State proudly acknowledged its responsibility in the Paris massacre, it underlined, quotation, the perversity of Paris, the city holding the cross over Europe. French society was then attacked for being both a symbol of a Christian society, but also a society open to any kind of perverse abominations and image found within the permanent anticipated metaphors. We learned that Brussels, where several people were arrested for being linked to those killings, was also the place where the French Muslim, Mehdi Nemrouche, went before killing four people at the Jewish Museum of the city. It is in the same city server that the Kouachi brother and Amedi Koulibaly both lost their the arms. Then Omar Abahoud, a crucial actor who seems to have planned everything in the Paris massacre, was also a close friend of Nemrouche, the French killer of Belgian Jews. They belong to the same fighting group. Then Fabien Klein, a French convert to Islam from Toulouse, who claims that from, from Syria IS responsibility for the Paris attack in the video who knew very well, he knew very well Mohamed Merah, the killer of soldiers and also of Jewish children and adults in Toulouse. Therefore, it seems that most kamikaze of January and November knew each other well. They looked like a close network. For instance, the father, it's amazing, for instance, the father of Sabri Essi, one of the Paris killer, became the husband of Fabien Klein's mother before getting married with Mera's mother, brother's mother. <laughs> to what degree, therefore, they all share beyond their fight against the Western world and modernity a common hatred against the Jews. To what extent can we relate to what is happening in November in Paris to what happens previously in France in terms of anti Semitism? There is no causal link, just maybe strong connections. For instance, we learn that the Bataclan from 1976 to 2004 had a Jewish owner, Eli Tutu. He was run by his son, Joël Lalou. He said it only in September 2015, just two months ago, to a non-Jewish society, and they led for good to Israel, mm -hmm. settling there permanently. Under Lalou Guy, the guidance, the Bataclan had been for many years, a place of jazz, rock music, but also gay perverse and decadent events. 
to use Islamic State statement, while being also during many years a place where several concerts were openly given in favor of the Israeli army, leading to several public Palestinian protests and threat. We learned that Jess Herx, the singer of the Eagles of Death Metal, the group performing this night at the Bataclan, had recently replied, Fuck you! while being asked by the BDS organization not to play in Israel. And he played with the group in Israel last year. It seems also that in 2009, Fabien Klein did already threaten the Bataclan, seen as a Zionist institution, and that in February 2011, Jassia al-Islam, the army of Islam, planned to attack the Bataclan. One witness told the police, quotation, we want to attack the Bataclan because the order is a Jew. A last remark. The Islamic State, rejoicing loudly, say, in its official statement, after Friday's slaughter, that, quotation, France has mocked the Prophet, quotation, and was, quotation, fighting against Islam, even within French society. The French people being seen as modern prosaic. All those sentences may be hinting explicitly at the famous French laïcité, at the recent law forbidden the headscarf or the hijab laws extending the laïcité not only to the state institution but also to the street or the market, leading to strong resentment among many French Muslims. We can add that those laws were loudly backed in the media by many Jewish thinkers like Finkertrat or Elizabeth Badenter in their public statements at the forefront of the ideological fight against the hijab and the visible presence of Islam within the public realm. All those connections, far from any causal explanation, may allow me, perhaps, to give this talk on anti-Semitism, cutting, nevertheless, a large part of what was already written. Even if France, as a Christian nation, raised concerns among some French and foreign Muslims, it seems that French Jews are also facing both Catholic and Muslim prejudices that we are witnessing a growing anti-Semitism share at least until the beginning of 2015, both by some rightist Catholic and some fundamentalist Muslim in an unexpected, scary alliance. It all starts in a rather peaceful manner in January 2013. A large crowd of Catholics, many hundred thousand people, invaded the Parisian street, protesting against a new law in favor of the wedding for everyone, an introduction of gender study into school curriculum, a process aiming at to them destroying the French family in s'mores, seen as an artificial invention of many American, wow, American <laughs> Jewish women theorists, allowing Jewish doctor to take care of innocent and naive French children, a law described as foreign to the French tradition of the family destroying its Catholic long-term tradition, the base of society itself, a law seen as important from the US with their multiculturalist and relativist innovations, their policy of gender identity, their nihilist counterculture. This large-scale Catholic mobilization meant also the revival of previous Franco-Francaise wars between the state and the church, the Catholic church being still reluctant to be the intrusion of the state within the family realm. As we remember, during the Third Republic, those laws of laicisation were seen as being implemented by liberal Protestants and Jews. Nowadays, Protestants are no more the target of those Catholic mobilizations, but the Jews are still not very far. For instance, when Simone Weil was in charge of the law allowing abortion, when under the guidance of Robert Badinter, the law abolished death penalty, when Professor René Friedman 
create the first baby Eprovet, the first artificial baby, or more recently when Vincent Payon, a self-declared Jew, took in charge as the Minister of Education, the teaching of the so-called gender theory within the elementary school, each time strong anti-Semitic protests could be heard. In, two, in 2013, many surveys showed that the French Catholic population has been shocked by those liberal measures dealing with gender. They became more and more rightist. It seemed that the réatmosphère, the Catholic integrist, stood behind those large mobilization, a growing proportion of those Catholics going to church, even supporting now, only now, now the National Front. A new generation of born-again Catholics looks much more traditionally. They behave as strong opponents against any cultural liberalism, the symbol of American Jewish influence. A kind of cattle pride invades the street of Paris, a type of child Tilly mobilization with its specific repertoire d'action, its Catholic moral aims. In March 2013, a more extreme movement called the French Spring was also able to bring again many hundred thousand Catholics in the street of Paris. This time, things became even more obvious. Many extremist rightist organizations were more than active. This new name, French Spring, was indeed chosen by Jacques Trémolet de Villiers, previously Paul Touvier lawyer, a Nazi collaborator, a famous Vichy militia protected by the Catholic Church, who worked closely with the German Nazi Klaus Barbie and killed many Jews during the member of the Bloc Identité who organized for many years those famous lunch saucisson pinard, ham and wine, forbidden both to Muslim and Jews, were among the new activists. On their side, one could also notice the presence of the New Action Française, the Royalist and Antisemitic Organization, the Jeunesse Nationaliste, Dissidence Française, and many rightist groups of stars, the Freemasons and the Jews. In March and April 2013, each time many hundred thousand people, mostly Catholic believers, marched again in the street of Paris. Then, on January 26, 2014, in the context of the still active Catholic mobilization, a new anti Semitic unexpected movement occurs in the street of Paris. It was called Day of Rust. A large crowd of militants belonging to the radical right, wearing their black uniform and carrying their flags, those of l'Action Française, L'Oeuvre Française, Jeune Nation, Ordre Nouveau, Résistance Royaliste, and so on, the toughest organization of the nationalist and anti semitic groups, were visible again, walking like military parade troops in their black suits and their black flags, shouting loudly, Français, réveille-toi, tu es ici chez toi. Frenchman, wait, you will be at home. Or France to the French, French to the France. The old slogan invented at the end of the 19th century by Edouard Trumont, written every day on the front page of this new newspaper, La Libre Parole, the same slogan used against Leon Blum and George Mandel. They also shout, Jew, 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 France will never be your France. In 2014, they still celebrated Maurice Barès the best French writer of the end of the 19th century, but also the prince of the anti semite They still remember <coughs> February 6, 1934, and they openly kept the living souvenir of Robert Brasillac, executed in 1944 for having collaborated with a German Nazi. Sometimes the street of Paris in this January 2014, they explicitly raised their arm like the German Nazi and shout, Likra, Juif, Likra, on n'en veut pas, Jew, Likra, we don't want you. They also sang, Hollande, le cri, qui dirige qui, qui dirige qui, hein? Israël, hors d'Europe, Israël. During this manifestation, the street of Paris occurring on January 2014, marching with them, one could also see a large number of young French Muslims coming from. Often from the 
Pharisees and servants. They were mocking the Jews and following their charismatic leader, the Adonai, who fought some years ago against the National Front before becoming a close friend of Jean-Marie Le Pen and his family. They shout, Juif, la France n'est pas à toi. Dieu, you know, own France. Non au sionisme. They sang their revisionist Shoah na na song created by Dieudonné, a song denying the reality of the Shoah, a supposed invention of the Jews used to acquire more power and money. They celebrate Racine and Fourisson, the Holocaust denier, Dieudonné giving to Fourisson a large audience among some young French Muslims of the suburbs, playing with him in the theater and evening after evening, denying the reality of the Shoah, a tale in his eyes, purely invented in the interest of Israel. They shout, Forisson a raison, la Shoah c'est du bidon. Forisson is right, the Shoah is untrue. Or, tu me tiens par la Shoah, je te tiens par l'ananas. You hold me through the Shoah, I hold you through the ananas. C'est lui also lively, l'ikra, crif, on, forget it. They probably made openly their canal, an anti-Semitic sexual gesture, seen by many as the reverse Nazi salute, a gesture also used by many national, nationalist leaders like Jean-Marie Le Pen to deny Jewish symbols like the Berlin Holocaust Memorial of the Toulouse School, where Jewish children were recently killed by Mera, the young French person. Walking in the crowd, of nationalist and Muslim, Muslim militant was also Alain Soral, the leader of an extremist movement dedicated to violence, the editor of Trumont, once a close advisor of Jean-Marie Le Pen, the contemporary of the American Empire, dominating the world, preaching an entire reconciliation between the Gaulois and French Muslim against the fanatical action of cosmopolitan Jewry, planning their world action from New York. Add to him, quotation, after the decay of Catholicism, communism, and French universalism, all of them being the heir of the Eleno Christian civilization, the last civilization still outside the empire, domination is the Muslim world organized around Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas. So in 2014, and the first months of 2015, one could witness a strange alliance between the extreme nationalist group and some Muslim militant in the common opposition to an imaginated Jewish power controlling the French nation in the name of Israel and the lines that may be vanishing nowadays in November 2015 when France is attacked by IS as being a Catholic nation. Curiously, at least before November 2015, it looks like it's a previous dream of an alliance against the Jews, which occurred during the Dreyfus affair in a time period of deep cultural crisis between the anti-Semitic mob led by Drummond and the strong, courageous, and austere Algerian Arab warriors foreign to trade, fighting bravely on their horses, united against the debile Jews fond of money and without any Muscles was back again. Will it disappear tomorrow? In 2014, at the core of this new alliance stands Judene and this incredible audience on the whole French territory. Since several years, Judene traveled from one main city to the other, many thousand people waiting for him, paying quite a lot of money for their seat, enjoying its anticipated jokes, the way he mocks the Shoah, the Jewish Journal is a Jewish organization, Israel as non legitimate state, destroying the Palestinian, making fathers of elitism, remaining what he called neutral between the Nazi and the Jews, even if you can imply where he stands for, praising the Hezbollah organization. The word Jew is openly shot by many in a discouraging way. The large audience clapping with enthusiasm, its numerous videos being watched by many millions of people. In one of them, he mocks François Mitterrand, François Hollande, the French president. François, 
did the brief ask him to come? Is the brief in charge of who is becoming the president? Francois, can't you feel it? The canal is slipping under your. This unpredicted common front against the Jews is celebrated by both nationalists and many reactionary Catholic newspapers. For instance, let me quote Minute, an extremist rightist newspaper quotation. In contemporary France, Zionism means power of the Jews. They are everywhere, they own everything for themselves, for Israel. And with its simple canal, Dieudonné is frightening them. It forecasts a clean and necessary sweep against this putridity. L'Action Française, the old newspaper created by Charles Maurras, want to, to kill Bloom, but on the back, and confess that for him Vichy was a divine surprise, condemned the Jewish offensive against Dieudonné, quotation, whatever our different point of view, we admire him. In this royalist and extremist newspaper, a Muslim leader of the French Spring wrote, quotation, victory implied a strong alliance between Catholic and Muslim, for présent, the front national newspaper, quotation, neither right nor left, our enemy's enemy can become our friends. Similarly, on January 9, 2014, just before the day of Ras, Rivarol, the royalist newspaper, celebrated the way Dieudonné endorsed for his own revisionist ideas. Let me read a paragraph of this nationalist prose in favor of Dieudonné, the black French leader of the Muslim living in the suburbs. Quotation. The Jewish problem is a crucial question. The Jewish question is, since 2000 years, a crucial theological problem, and also now with Zionism and the existence of Israel, a political or geopolitical problem. The question of historical revisionism is also important. The Shoah is the foundation on which a new world is based. Whatever the scandals or threat against the Jews, there were almost no public collective reaction. The nationalist newspaper remained almost silent. The national newspaper remained almost silent and took many weeks before we could hear a strong condemnation from the president and the prime minister. This year, 2014, seems to have been a turning point. On the one hand, Jewish religion is seen by 76% of the French people as compatible with the, French, with the values of the French society. Jews are seen more and more as similar to any other Frenchman. 33% in 1946, 85% in 2014. And any expression like dirty Jew is strongly condemned by 82% of the French population. Those answers in all recent polls led some observer to underline, up to them, the supposed weakness of French anti-Semitism. On the other hand, one should first notice the persistence of traditional prejudices, like those dealing with the so-called strong power of Jews, 21% in 1988, 33% in 2013, 37% in 2014. <clears throat> of their peculiar relation toward money, 63% in 2014. And one should underline the strength of anti Semitic hatred on the web. A good Jew is a dead Jew. A good Jew smells burnt. A good Jew tortures six young Palestinians every morning. Slogans seen by many million people. Even more crucial, one should look carefully at the official report of the Ministère de l'Intérieur, the recent one published just several months ago. Add to it, anti-Semitic action doubled from 2013 to 2014, the end of 2014, from 423 in 2013 to 851 in 2014. To quote the minister, quotation, the increase of anti-Semitic incident 
concern more the actual action, an increase of 130%, than the simple, than the simple threatening comments, 90%. It means that even <coughs> if anti-Semitism seems to be weak within public opinion, anti-Semitic action and the most harmful one were incredible increasing during this year. Then, in this context, came the worst. On January 7, 2015, three young French Muslims killed brutally several famous members of the Charlie Hebdo staff, who also previously fought against the Muslim fatwa and were at the forefront of the secularist conviction denying every, any religious pretensions, so that the Catholic Church of the synagogue, but also of the Muslim Sharia. As a newspaper, Sharia Hebdo became famous for openly praising Salman Rushdie pamphlet against the Sharia. Acting in a coordinated manner, manner, they also killed four young Jews, among 15 to 20 hostages, at Dutut in Kosher shop, located in the server close to Paris a place where a large Jewish population is concentrated. In the name of the Prophet Muhammad, those young French Muslims, born and educated in French by the Republican school, John Al-Qaeda in Yemen, like so many young French Muslims, fighting nowadays with ISS in Syria. This time, after the murder of Charlie Hebdo staff, nine journalists and one psychanalyst, a Jewish woman, killed apparently, apparently deliberately as a Jew, the murder also of four Jews at the kosher shop of three policemen, France awake itself. On January 11, the nation spoke loudly, maybe four million people protested in the street of Paris and the main city of France, even in small quiet cities for far from the provinces, walking peacefully, recovering a deep sense of republican fraternity. Most people identified themselves as Charlie claiming that I am Charlie, protesting against the shooting of the Charlie staff. Seven million copies of the new edition of Charlie Hebdo were sold, an impressive number, this new paper being usually bought only by a tiny number of readers, suddenly became a national cause, the symbol of liberty of the newspaper, of freedom of consciousness. People were queuing almost all night to be able to buy in the morning by 6 a.m. or 5.30, this special edition, made in Harry by the remaining staff. On January 11, that was the biggest crowd maybe ever seen since the French Revolution and the Fête de la Fédération on July 14, 1719, or the liberation of Paris in 1944. The people shout, united, or we are a people. And like in Germany, after the fall of the Berlin War, we are the people, not only a people, but the people. They proudly say, we're not afraid, even if everyone was in fact afraid. It was like if the French nation recovered from its illness, its despair, its individualism, its deep feeling of being without, of being without any future, without any spirit. A nation without its soul, having lost its exceptionalism. Suddenly, liberté, égalité, fraternité were back again, those newborn citizens standing up again and marching almost unanimously from the Republic to the nation, through the Boulevard Voltaire, the traditional Republican promenade. A crowd dominated by people in their 50s, mainly white, <coughs> middle class, with few French Muslims and maybe only a few Jews. They walk quietly like so many Republican crowds before happy to identify themselves to those symbols of French enlightenment, the triumph of the Voltairean reason against all kind of irrationalism, all religious fanatism, a new endorsement of the famous laïcité, the strong separation between the state and all religion, praising the legitimacy of the strong state against all churches, just the contrary of the meaning of the world of separation in the US, preventing the intrusion of the state in the realms of religions. It was such a remarkable mobilization of the French people that several sociologists began using Durkheim 
concept of collective consciousness, of collective effervescence, elaborated by the French Jewish sociologists in the context of the gathering of a big crowd of citizens celebrating the triumph of the Republic against the anti refusal precisely Place de la République, but also Place de la Nation in 1899. Other social scientists, like the French Jewish historian Pierre Laura, the editor of the famous Realm of Memory, also published an article in which he claimed that it was a moment de communion, a moment of strong collective feeling using an expression which belongs both to the Catholic communion and the Republican repertoire. Outlining the religious dimension of the French Revolution, the fusion of two contradictory by united collective feelings. What he called an événement monstre, a monstrous event, something exceptional by its dimension that is more or less permanent within French history. By many aspects, and this is a crucial point, remaining quite unseen, it is true that since the 17th and 18th century, anti-clericalism belonged to the French Enlightenment much more than to, ang to the Anglo-Saxon one. It led to the strength of political pamphlets, political satire, and political leaflets against the strong Catholic Church. Even if Charlie Hebdo is a rather obscure newspaper, its dimension, its symbolic dimension remains a crucial as the heir of this long tradition of anti-clericalism, i.e. yesterday Catholicism, nowadays mainly Islam, but nevertheless also Catholicism and Judaism. Today, in a de-Christianized country, where less than 3% of its inhabitants are still attending regularly the church, where so few people, contrary to the US, still believe in God, heaven, and hell, to smash brutally Charlie the stuff was also left, was also felt like an attack against the identity à la française, i.e. French exceptionalism. Then, what about the Jews? What about the kosher shop murder? What about the previous slogans, death the Jews and France the French? How can we relate those events from January 2014 to January 2015 and then to November 2015? The whole nation was now standing on its feet to defend the laïcité à la française, but within those big crowds, few people were openly protesting against the murder of peaceful Jews preparing their Shabbos by buying kosher food. Like one commentator argued, journalists and policemen were doing their job. Jews went on their shopping. They didn't seem to be part of this événement monstre, to quote again Pierre Noir. By the way, like in November 2015, they were openly related. The three young French Muslims, acting in a coordinated way together, two of them in Charlie Hebdo and the third in the kosher shop, follow carefully planned action. Moreover, it seems that Amélie Coulibaly, the French jihadist who killed the Jews, was in fact willing to attack a before Jewish school. Moreover, later on, still in January, the flag of the Islamic State could be seen on the web, on the web facing the kosher shop. And below the flag was written, Les loups solitaires revisit le commerce juif qui a été attaqué avec l'aide d'Allah par le martyr Koulibaly dans le centre de Paris. The lonely wolves are coming again at the kosher shop that was attacked with the help of Allah by Koulibaly the martyr was distributed on the jihadist forum and on Twitter with the hashtag Kulibali dans notre coeur, 
Koulibaly in our heart. So the connection between the two murders, those of Charlie Hebdo staff and those of the Jews in the kosher shop, were actually clearly related. Furthermore, Koulibaly mentor once told him in jail that they must help the Palestinian children because later on they will kill the Jews. The killing of Jews were condemned by President Hollande and Prime Minister Manuel Wallace. They gave some noble and perfect speeches against anti-Semitism. Among the big crowd on January 11, with good eyes, with good eyes, one could notice few placards on which was written, Je suis juif, along many other telling, Je suis policier, and a forest of Je suis Charlie. But what, but again, what about the Jews? What about the recent anti-Semitic months of January? What about the slogan, death to the Jews and France to the French? Shout in January 2014, in July 2014, during the war between Israel and Hamas, by some crowds of French Muslims threatening some Parisian synagogue, but also throwing already grenades against another kosher shop in Sarcelles. What about the radical right? What about the actual strength of the National Front, led by Martin Marine Le Pen, an extremist political movement, who won the recent local European election in France, became for the first time the most important political party, an extremist party which might win next December 2015 some important regional election. It's almost the end. Don't be afraid. So what are the connections between the still active radical anti-Semitic right? Some young Muslim coming from a suburb denying the Shoah and using the famous Kenel as a sign of anti-Semitic provocation. And finally, the young Frenchman full of anti-Semitic hatred related to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, denying the existence of the Israeli state, threatening the Jews all over the world. How can the Republican nation, so shocked by the killing of Charlie Hebdo recognize and face those various anti-Semitic movements whose actions were, wel were welcomed previously without such a large mobilization? For instance, when Yosef Fofana, a young black Muslim born in Paris and his gang, kept prisoner more than 20 days and then tortured and killed in January 2008 the young French Jew Ilan Marini, abducted in Paris as necessary being a rich Jew, easy to bewitch by a young beautiful woman acting in agreement with Sofana, a demonstration against racism occurred in Paris, but no more than 70,000 people also protest against this awful murder. When in March 2012, Mohamed Mera, another young French Muslim of Algerian descent, claiming time with Al Qaeda, killing Toulouse and Montauban three French soldiers, but also went in a Jewish school and killed four Jews among them three young children, because in his, way, in his words, the dish, the Jews kill our brother and sister in Palestine, only several thousand people march in Paris, in Toulouse in the absence of the president, of the government. But one could also notice that Mera ceased to say, I am proud, 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 proud of my brother's action. One could also witness demonstration in favor of Mera, or read, or read graffiti in Toulouse like Viva Mera, or Fat the Kippa, a lot of anticipated incidents occurring all over France. When in December 2014, at Créteil, in the suburb of Paris, a young Jewish girl was raped, and her Jewish friend beaten for being seen as rich Jews by three young French Muslims armed with guns. A small crowd of Jews gathered there to protest at Nazir's occurs. Even if each time the highest authority of the state condemned later, later on those terrific, terrific actions, if each time Manuel Valls, as a minister in charge of police, or later on as a prime minister, said loudly that quotation, France without its Jews will no more be France. 
which is a courageous statement, but also a quite strange one. After all, how can one imagine such a worst week within the French history, Jews being part of the French history, even before the birth of the Gaulle and Asterix? <laughs> what can be done once we look seriously at some young French Muslim, mainly in the suburb of Paris, who admire Mera and reject the idea of being Charlie, who understood without always approving it the killing of the Charlie staff, saying openly that the caricatures were an offense to Mohammed that cannot be accepted that should be punished. What can be done if they still believe today that those killings were the result of an unknown plot that surely the Mossad was behind it, that it was, be like it was behind September 11, or even nowadays behind the Paris massacre. <coughs> Building then the most Machiavellian plot to influence the whole world against the Muslim so that Israel and the Jews will be, at the end, safer. Are there any connection between those killings of January 2015, executed by some French Muslim, and Dieudonné propaganda and speeches against Jew and Israel? Dieudonné claiming proudly, after those killings, that he was not himself Charlie, like millions of Frenchmen, but that he was Charlie Koulibaly, a provoking statement mixing Charlie and Koulibaly is a young killer of the kosher shop. And today, are there all obvious connections between outside and inside threats? Furthermore, nowadays, and I get a lot here, don't be afraid, the end. Last two pages. Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, the French state is losing its power, its strength. It seems unable to keep the public real as a universalist community of citizens. We know that the French political tradition of public realm does not accept the idea of an organized community within the public realm. We know also that the Third Republic did not easily tolerate any association, trade unions, or even political parties. But, as it has been shown, by Jean-François Chanet, or recently by Mona Ozouf in her recent book, Composition Française, the petite patrie were able to survive. Therefore, beyond the logic of a strong state, the logic of accommodation prevails, allowing cultural minorities to survive. Today, Thanks to the market logic and the growing globalization, the strong French state is slowly failing in pieces, is dismantled, it cannot socialize anymore its citizens through its own public institution. Then the state is no more the explaining variable of any social conflict. Instead, with the vacuum of the state as a regulating institution, France is today witnessing a deep cultural conflict among various imaginative communities, like in the 1890s, but without the presence of a strong state in charge of all practical accommodement. For the first time, even the Catholics, once identified to the nation itself, now feels like being only a worried community, among many other, resenting the growing importance of the so-called Muslim community as a reified war. The so-called Jewish community feels also insecure, bring, being frightened by the so-called Muslim community. So it's impossible that today those imagined community framed by these growing artificial processes of communitarization of the Catholic, of the Jews, and the Muslim, would be at the core 
of the anti-Muslim feeling, but also of the increasing attack against the Jews seen by the nationalist Catholic and by some Muslim, influenced by the Levi and the jihadists, as a dominant community linked to Israel, the dominant state of the world, controlling even the US policy. In the world of Alain Soral, only North Korea and Iran are free for, of any Jewish Israeli influence. <laughs> if the nationalist anti-Semitic right is still active, like always, its strength cannot explain the growing movement of Aliyah, of French Jews toward Israel. Since the end of the 19th century, French Jews were always loyal to the French state. They established an alliance with it. There was an emblematic servant of the state to speak like Joseph Yerushalmi. They prayed for their solid king, the emperor, the Republican state. They be even became state Jews, and they seldom left the nation, either to immigrate or to make the area. In fact, they were quite hostile to any kind of idea for themselves. They held a kind of philanthropic idea for the host Juden, but they condemned, like the American German Jews at the beginning, any idea of a Jewish state. This has recently dramatically changed. We know that last year, in 2014, more than 8,000 8, French Jews <coughs> left our Israel, other opportunities to build their life in Canada or in the US. As a, as a result, one could almost notice, as it has been written in a very interesting article published by Jewish Review of Books, September 2015, by Yossi Shane and Sarah Feiner, a friend of mine, uh, one could notice a kind of quotation, Israelization of the Jews of France. Israelization of the Jews of France. Threatening the old Israelite pattern establishing strong connection between French Jews living in France and now in Israel, blurring, blurring the distinction between here and there. In this quite frightening situation, endangering the loyalty of the nation state, many American or even Israeli newspaper foresaw an immediate, immediate exodus toward Israel and the Israeli government is already planning strong incentive measures to boost the French idea. So, the crucial question, and this is really the end, just two minutes, just a crucial question, and uh, let us think about it for a bit. The crucial question for the French Jews, but also for the French nation of the war, could be the following one. To what degree the French Muslims are sharing those anti Semitic feelings? Has the process of assimilation crucial in the French exceptionalist, exceptionalism logic entirely failed, leaving those French Muslims into despair, in need of an imaginary collective belonging such as the Huma or such as the Jihad? Is there a connection between their increasing, amazing discrimination at work? Is there a connection between their increasing, amazing discrimination at work or in the public realm and the extent of their own prejudices? Such discrimination has been shown recently by an incredible work by Marianne Valfort Discrimination religieuse à l'embauche, this book was published just this last October, a month ago. Very scary report. Here, at least, and this is the end, we may present an optimist data. Sylvain Bois and Vincent Hibert, two young French scholars, in their still unpublished empirical research, may be the only one dealing with this relation between French Muslim values and antisemitism. Acknowledge that quotation. We cannot say that all religious Muslims are antisemitic, but the religious practice tends to crystallize 
into anti-Semitic attitude. Wow. But then they had that quotation. L'intégration à la française still works. Allowing children from Africa, Maghreb, or Turkey to leave their parents' values. And they showed that the second generation of French Muslims seldom share those anti-Semitic values. There is a very interesting table, page, uh, table number six, by chance you can find this uh, article. Can we remain confident in the result of this recent serious sociological research? Even if the recent leaders in January, I mean November 2015, belong to the second generation, even to the third one, like so many young joining the jihad in Syria and Iraq. And if so, if so, and only so, if you can believe in this research, the conclusion of this research, maybe tomorrow the French nation shall become less the target of those attacks against the French values of laïcité, like the Charlie Hebdo killing, and maybe the November killings. Maybe French Jews shall also be less threatened by those anti-Semitic attacks. Let's hope that for once, at least, a serious social science research shall be able to predict a better future, that the way out of religion, to quote Marcel Boucher, shall also soon concern the French Muslim, thus be transforming themselves in loyal citizens and reconcile to the French values. That to reconcile France, keeping its universalist exceptionalism, while nevertheless recognizing a kind of American legitimate cultural pluralism, will soon become a peaceful society. If this kind of French multiculturalism of liberal cultural pluralism, allowing a redefinition of Muslim identity fails, violence as a war may erupt again from within, but from without, followed by a new anti-Semitic, more or less violent incidents, leading therefore to an increased departure toward Israel or America, a turning point in the long-term history of deeply, of deeply loyal French Jews. Thank you.
as something which explains um, that how can I explain that? There is a red there is a permanent reference to February. There was a permanent reference to February. We must act like and even being stronger and then destroy the Republic and uh, they, they didn't succeed, we're going to succeed. I think it's wrong. The, uh, the parallel, I think, works much more with the 18, uh, with the Dreyfus affair. Because uh, the, 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 the crucial question was really the, the Catholics' mobilization and uh, I can't remember what was my argument, but I had an argument in my book <laughs> uh, in which I tried to show that the, uh, the, the, the Dreyfus affair was much more closer to what's happening nowadays in France than the 30s. Uh, and I can't remember how I disagree and why I disagree with the uh, parallel being drawn with the 30s. Uh, uh, well, maybe I'm too tired. Uh, so I'm and perhaps to perhaps it's the link between Catholic anti-Semitism and uh, at that time and, and, and uh, yeah, that was a, there was another argument. I think um, I can't remember. Yes, so I'm so sorry. embarrassed, really, being unable to answer. Um, but I, at least in this book, I strongly disagree with this parallel, which has been uh, used by many commentators in January 2014. If you read Le Monde, if you read Liberation, if you read a lot of journalists, or even some historians, they uh, compare what was going on in January uh, 2014 to what was going on in February 2013. And I think it was a completely uh, a false uh, analogy. But, uh, forgive me, maybe I look at my book and I knew the answer later on. <laughs> Hi, do, do you think that the fact that this recent violence was so broadly targeted, you know, will take some of the wind out of people like Judone and uh, perhaps, you know, some of the wind out of the right wing anti Semitism, so, so that, you know, I mean, this could be a moment. So sorry, could you repeat the question? I, I don't really understand it. I'm so sorry. Okay, so you know the fact that the attacks yes. on Friday were broadly based. They weren't, you know, against Jews. They weren't against Laïcité. They were just. It was not clearly against Jews. Not at all. It was just not you know, at all. broadly against right uh, uh, society, young people in Paris. Right. So that 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 fact might take some of the wind out of people like Giordano attacking. Jews, uh, the right wing, uh, you know, there could be a moment where French more broadly identify with, with Let's Jesus. hope it's coming. Yeah. Let's hope it will be coming, but I'm not sure. And all these kind of events I've been dealing with is, are still there. I mean, all the extreme right organization, all this anti-Semitic beliefs within some uh, French citizens of Muslim code, some at least maybe. But it, all the sociological data are still there. The research was done in 2014, 2013. So, but by, by, by what, but what kind of miracle? The, the social, the, the deepest social processes which are there could just by a miracle vanish. I'm really uh, reluctant to follow this kind of very optimist vision of the future of French society. And, uh, I'm still quite afraid by uh, all those kind of deep uh, feelings, values, resentments, and uh, profound uh, anti-Semitic values within some part of the French society. And, 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 and I think today a lot of scholars are really, they don't deal enough with the extreme right nationalist uh, Organization. They are still there, they are still publishing their newspapers, they are still organized. They may be tiny group, but they have a lot of people surrounding them. And uh, obviously, uh, Paxton knew better than I this kind of uh, organization, but 
There are, there are today very few academic studies of those extremist, nationalist, and Catholic, traditionalist, born-again, extremist uh, organization. And they do exist. They do exist. They are organized at, at, at the level of everyday, everyday life, in different institutions, uh, trade unions, uh, university, and so on and so forth. And for instance, the Tagiev idea that new anti-Semitism is coming from the Muslim and so on, I don't buy the argument. And, uh, for instance, this kind of very interesting sociological work I've, I've been quoting, it's, it's, it's a very optimistic one. I give you the conclusion. You should have a look at this conclusion. It's a very optimistic one that, that that the Republican education, that the Republican values are still being transmitted from one generation into the other, that may be the, that may be the something uh, more convincing, I would say, but, but it has to be seen to what degree does it work. Here's, here's the microphone. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for discussing the background of that Taklal, which I did not get from our press until I started looking at Wikipedia on that Taklal. I don't know if it's more discussed in Paris, if people know about it, but it brings to mind the other issue. You talk about anti-Semitism, which in some ways... This was a plan, Tommy. I know, but in some ways... <laughs> Shani, Shani took you to so. But in some ways... to keep you. It's a little anachronistic because because in Europe and and also in left-wing circles in this country, anti-Semitism has become subsumed under anti-Zionism. And I wonder if you would address that, because anti-Jewish feeling as anti-Zionism has surfaced in groups that were not uh, traditionally uh, so antagonistic to, to Jews. In other words, many people say that Anti-Zionism is the new anti-Semitism in Europe and in circles here. I'd like to hear what you have to say about that. It's a long discussion, but I don't really buy this argument neither. And the kind of uh, items I've been describing has no relation at all with Israel. It's just uh, the religious uh, long-term anti-Semitism, the old economic anti-Semitism, the long... It's, they are all the, the features of long-term anti-Semitism are still there. Money, uh, race, sexuality, uh, and nothing, nothing is dealing with, it, with, with Israel. So a part of it could be linked to Israel. A lot of people could, can be against Israel, and Israel being seen as a Jewish nation, which is a Jewish nation. But I, I would be quite reluctant to uh, to follow this kind of argument that anti-Semitism is just anti-Israelism, and uh, yeah, I think it's still it's it, it's still at it, its own specificity, even in the United States. Even in the United States, people have to be very careful about the long-term tradition of everyday life anti-Semitism, which was much more heavier than one believed in the 19th century, even the 20th century, and is still there, not very far. But you did mention that Batacan had been targeted because it's pro it's big emotion pro today. Zionist uh, reputation of the owners. Uh, it was it was a well, funny uh, it was a funny remark in uh, Le Monde or somewhere I read that uh, yesterday on the web or during the night and so on. It seemed you know why Batacan was called the Batacan? Everyone no. 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 you know it maybe so I'm going to say it. Before you, it's, I didn't learn. I learned it yesterday. It, it was called by. Uh, it, was, it was the name of uh, opera, you know, operette, by a Jew in Offenbach. 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 Bataclan. It, it, it was after the Chinese, the, the conquest of the French army of the Cochinchin expedition. It seems that Offenbach wrote an opera, operette called Bataclan. Like, Terms of Chinese sound, so it, it even here adds a kind of Jewish dimension. I'm almost, I'm almost sure that the guy didn't know at all that Offenbach was there at the beginning. But nevertheless, it's quite funny. Mark, you want to say something? Well, 
First, of thank you. Your usual My pleasure. Uh, admirable, uh, very ambitious uh, panorama, which combines social science, analysis, and engagement, which I think is an admirable model. Uh, I wanted to question a couple of points. One is the what you talked about this, let's say, nascent alliance or <coughs> mini alliance of uh, ex jihadist extremist uh, Muslims with the far right. Uh, the more obvious uh, development has been, of course, that the far right has been very anti-Muslim. Uh, certainly Marina Pen with her more infamous uh, allegations about the Muslim wave taking over the streets of Paris and so on and so on, as we all know, uh, have had much more prominence than the indications that you identified. So could you just uh, clarify a bit how you see the two, to some extent, possibly coexisting, but in any case, they certainly look like they're in contradiction. Uh, yeah, also. Uh, the second point, semi-related, you, of course, your topic was anti-Semitism, not bigotry more generally, but clearly there's an enormous amount of anti-Muslim, uh, broad brush, unfortunately, anti-Muslim uh, se sentiment bigotry in France, too. So without trying to carry out a similar uh, analysis, could you say, say a word about the relation between the two? So, and a final point, just to point. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite unrelated, but it is about anti-Semitism, and your fascinating essay is one among very many in the book Pathways to an Emancipation, which you co-edited and co-authored. Uh, you suggested that one of the elements of French exceptionalism has been that the place of Jews in France has been so strongly identified with French Republican like values and that France is exceptional with respect to the fact that there's been very little aliyah, very little immigration. That seems to have changed rather dramatically, as you indicated in the press in your lecture. Could you comment on how come it's changed if you agree that it's been such a dramatic change? Look, I need another lecture. Right. <laughs> so, You'll have to very, come back. That's right. very briefly, uh, and maybe I won't answer to everything. Uh, it's a usual way to escape, you know. Um, yes, everyone would say, well, what, what about the anti-Muslim uh, threat? Well, the very easiest way to answer this, very seriously, is just to take the Ministère de l'Intérieur report, which was published two months ago. If you read carefully, it, they will say that I don't remember, something like 60 or 70 percent of the worst race, general, general racist act were against the Jews. Even more than that. I mean, the Ministère de l'Intérieur, so it's not a partial uh, interpretation, acknowledged the fact that the worst, the largest proportion of the worst general racist action in France in 2014 and also in 2013 was directly against the Jews and not against the Muslims. And as you know, there are only 400,000 Jews and maybe four or five millions of French Muslims. So you do see the consequence in terms of proportion if you relate them to their actual presence within the French society. So. Yes, it is true that we must take care of that. But maybe not too far away. Maybe we must, we must not pay too much attention to that. Jews are being killed. And hopefully, Muslims are not killed, at least in old days. It's, it's been, hopefully, and that's, that's a good point, a long time since the Muslims were killed. But for the first time in French history, maybe, we have to go very far away. I can't see many periods during the French history where Jews were killed. I can't find any, maybe, during the Vichy regime, obviously, but that's a very peculiar situation. There is no more space. Germans are there. 
the nationalist, fascist, and the pitinist, and whatever, uh, are re ruling society. But besides Vichy, there are very few periods during which Jews have been killed. I mean, you have almost to go back to the Crusade to see Jews being killed in Algeria, somewhere killed in the 13th, but Algeria is Algeria, you know. It's not, it's not France itself, you know, the, the territory. And the, the, uh, just maybe one second again. I'm going to escape, thanks to you. Ah, no, no, no. Yes, I'm going to escape. remember the first question, but at, at least I will try to answer the third one. Um, well, the, the logic of my conclusion was really that uh, if this kind of strong state system, strong state uh, community of citizens and uh, is uh, falling in peace, uh, obviously uh, the, the loyalty of every kind of citizens is going to be threatened. And it is true that nowadays, since many years, a lot of young people are leaving France. Jews and non-Jews. Coming to business, doing business in London, business in Canada, business in New York. And one can see among all those young people, Jews and non-Jews, and we do know around us a lot of children, Jewish children, of our family, or friends, and so on, are already here. They are already settling here for good. They are already leaving the state mobility. They don't find, like non-Jews, their future in a strong nation state and within state mobility. They don't try to enter the National School of Administration anymore. As you know, some years ago there were 3,000 candidates trying to enter the National School of Administration, the highest school of the French prestige of you know, the state. And nowadays it's less something like 600. So non-Jews and Jews don't care so much with this state symbolic meritocratic mobility. So the vanishing of the Republican strong state has obviously strong consequences on the behavior of Jews and non-Jew citizens leading them toward society, business, uh, new economy, and whatever and so on. So going outside the frontiers, leaving France forever or just for permanent period. If I may, two follow-up questions on the anti-Semitism question versus anti-Zionism. Yeah. If you turn that question around and address it from the point of view of the Muslim population, would you then answer it differently and suggest that the anti-Semitism is driven by the anti-Zionism or by Israel's behaviors? First question. Well, well, uh, I don't know. As I said, that, that, that goes. And the second question is your indicators were, were very revealing from the Ministère de l'Intérieur. I haven't seen that report. I'd like to see it. But suppose you were to take. You can read online, I guess. Yeah, I will. Uh, suppose you were to take, and I don't wish to minimize those indicators at all, but suppose, as a good sociologist, you would look at a few other indicators. For example, number of police arrests of Jews versus Muslims, police brutality against one group or the other, or, or just just to give you a few options, how, how would that look in that respect? Well, I will be waiting for your research. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. Someone has to do the research. Someone has to go to the field. And uh, the only thing that we can use is those kind of data and sociological work which has been done. And uh, as I, I mentioned for this which is very recent work by this scholar, very, very uh, impressive work which has been written by this Maître Conférence en Économie, Marianne Falfort. It's a very interesting work, Discrimination Religieuse à l'embauche. 
une réalité. Antisémitisme, and you know what, let me add a word on this. Antisémitisme et islamophobie sur le marché du travail, instrumentaire, octobre, octobre 2015. So it's really news. It's a scoop almost. And if you read this very carefully, it's an amazing word based on more than 20,000 examples of, uh, of uh, candidature uh, attempt to, be, to get a job with a uh, surname, Catholic surname, Jewish surname, and Muslim surname, uh, having the same kind of uh, studies, level, and so on and so forth. And they've done an amazing work. And they show, if I do remember, that citizen having a slightly Muslim feature in the name has a hundred percent less chances of just receiving a letter about their but you know what? I was really impressed. They've done the job also on someone having the slightest some indication of being a Jew. And they are also 30% less than the Catholic. The François against maybe Emmanuel or David or something slightly different. Wow, so many emotions. <laughs> and 30% uh, less than the Jews, which is completely unknown. That Jews also suffer of discrimination and embauche. I didn't know, no one knew about it. This is a very interesting report and one should read very carefully. I'm sure I didn't answer at all to your <laughs> question, but it's a way to escape from it. <laughs> so, might be the end. Okay, we're just going to take a few more questions. Just uh, make sure it's not on you. Is it on you? It might be on you. Okay, so <coughs> the question is Sorry. Okay. I recently spoke with um, the Okay, so I recently spoke with a leader of um, French high school social studies teachers, like Plus d'Histoire Géo, and he told me that he had been the teacher of someone who had become um, a terrorist. And he, he also said that, you know, this, you know, the radicalization is a, is a big problem in the French schools. But he said that he wanted to souligner, you know, underline the fact that this, this radicalization doesn't affect all of France. And so my question to you is, is it possible that this very vocal anti-Semitism um, that's coming from the, the right, the Catholic right, as well as um, some Islamicists, is it possible that they're the most vocal, but they don't really represent, I hate to say, la vraie France, which maybe is represented by those who came to the demonstration, to the manifestation, to show their support at La Place de la République the other day? I think I already answered to that, because as this report of the Minister showed, there is a very weak anti-Semitism in the public opinion. And it's really convincing. All the data are really convincing. There is a weak, there is an agreement on the integration of Jews within the French society. There are still prejudices, Jews and money, Jews and power. are still there, 30% of the population. That strong anti-Semitism has disappeared within the public opinion. But the question is to explain how, nevertheless, strong anti-Semitic actions are nevertheless there. And again, my, my answer would be we need more research. Uh, and even those 800 strong anti-Semitic actions during last year, one should add many more because many more are not reported to the police. So, 
we need more social studies, maybe less on public opinion than on actual strong incidents. Okay, we have a lot of hands up, but I don't want to give the answer. Maybe one or two of the answers. That's it. That's it. So if you could, I know you really want to ask questions, so keep them very short, and let's take a couple questions, and then we'll see what Pierre can answer in his remaining moments. Is there any usefulness of the uh, anti-hate speech laws? Is there, are they useful at all, those anti-hate speech laws that are different from what we have here? We don't have really anti-hate speech laws. <coughs> Let's take a couple of questions. Okay, what's your question? Okay, mine actually involves the uh, matter of immigration to Israel. Is there any research on just which French Jews are actually going uh, I discussed this a couple of times recently in Paris, and one interesting answer I was given is that it wasn't anti-Semitism that was driving Business. them to move, but rather and many of them were Algerian from the Maghreb, and they were more comfortable in Israel. Interesting perspective. We don't know. Again, yeah. we don't know. People are now working on this. A lot of scholars in the United States. People need PhD subjects. <laughs> I, actually asked, I actually asked for this so, yes, no, <laughs> and I was told there really isn't. There are doing the research on many young students with a PhD on uh, on uh, the idea of friendship, and uh, so we will know who they are there, where who, where they come from, what kind of social class they belong, what kind of value they have. Uh, did they come from North Africa before? Are they Alsatian, real Alsatian Jews or before? We don't know. We don't know. We don't really know. The, the very interesting question I think is, I, I was already discussing this in, in, in this lecture, is it's a blurry dimension between, between both population here and there. For instance, when, when anything happened in Israel, when anything happened in Israel, killing, murder, whatever, new settlement, whatever. So the journalist, the French TV journalist, they ask question to the Israeli, but the Israeli answer in French. <laughs> so at the TV you see people being Israeli and talking French. So after, after a while, people are in front of me. They really wonder who is who and where is who is where, who is who, you see. There's a kind of blurring of the dimension between the French Jews you know, and uh, the fact that there are so many Jews being there you know, and the French media are always asking people but I say always find, always able to find people replying in French. <coughs> que pensez-vous de cela, l'attentat? So people somewhere in the deepest part of France, they are really wondering who is who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you explain the lack and the weakness of the Republican reaction in front of like anti-Semitic actions and? Especially as well from the Korea, how do you explain? Do you explain us this? This is like very concerning, I think, for me. It's like the lack and the fear of defending the Republican values in the case of anti-Semitic values, and and also what what can we do against that? And yes, the prejudices that is maybe Jews are too protected by the state, Jews are like you know too victimized. So how can we fight that? And, I'm afraid that uh, it's a crucial question and uh, we must not overemphasize it because as you know there have been so many speeches by Valls or Hollande or Kasner, you know, we need the Jews, we need the Jews. But the very interesting idea is so many times Valls had said that uh, I mean, he, 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 he was wondering, in fact he was in fact Imaginating a society in which there would be no Jews. In a way, he was allowing, he was raising his arguments. 
which is imaginable, which is something amazing. How can the first minister, the, how can the chief of the government of the French nation could even say that that would be something very bad for France? That's something which can't be even mentioned, I would say. And this image was something terrifying for me. And he was using it permanently. Une France sans les Juifs serait quelque chose de terrible. Wow. Uh, une France sans les Berrichons, sans les Bretons, ce serait... <laughs> ça serait pas imaginable. <laughs> no problems. Let's hope they will be solved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, thank you so much.